right. I think we're I think we're started recording. So if you guys could just say what's up, um, and then uh, we can get started on this. All right. So I'm going to share my screen. So today I'm going to be talking to you guys about um, uh, United States soccer and why uh, they should increase the advertising in it. Um, so starting off here um, with this picture, hold on, let me fix my, my Zoom so that I don't block any of the presentation. All right, so starting off with this picture right here, um, this represents a lot of uh, United States citizens when they think about uh, the sport of soccer. A lot of them think it's very boring. Uh, they think it's a soft sport. Um, and I know this because that used to be me. And which is why this presentation means a lot to me because over quarantine, I kind of got into soccer for the first time in my life. Uh, as a kid, I never really played soccer. Uh, the only time I ever played it was at summer camp. Uh, I, I typically did every sport my brother did. Um, but uh, as quarantine kind of rolled along, uh, I kind of got into it and I realized how big the sport was globally. Um, so yeah, so I want to talk to you guys about how increasing um, the advertising in the United States uh, can lead to higher revenues in the sport uh, for the country and for the MLS in general, um, and also um, how the culture that revolves around soccer can really be uh, affected by increasing advertising. All right, so talking about the United States men's and women's national team, um, the men's team, I'm sure you guys know the women's team a little bit more. Um, as they've had greater success. Uh, the men's team, not so much. Uh, they've never won a World Cup, actually. The first World Cup they were in was in 1930, and they made it to the semifinal. And to this day, that's the farthest they've ever made it in the tournament. Uh, the women's team, on the other hand, they've won the World Cup four times, uh, most recently in 2019. I'm sure a lot of you guys remember that. Um, so why does the men's team struggle so much in the World Cup? Um, so it starts about early development. Um, the talent uh, in the United States is just not as high as in other countries, uh, other continents, Europe, South America, uh, Africa. All these countries are born with soccer in their blood. Uh, it's been part of their culture for a lot longer than the United States has, um, and it shows on the field uh, and off the field as we'll get into the numbers uh, in a little bit. But uh, talking about the World Cup a little bit, uh, here's the World Cup trophy. Uh, the men's team for the United States has never hoisted it, sadly. Um, but just just some numbers to, to show you that uh, the United States is a lot less involved in international soccer matches than other countries. Um, in the 2014 World Cup, uh, United States citizens, uh, there was 26.5 million viewers for the final match, uh, which actually broke a record for the most watched soccer match uh, in United States history, even though it was between Germany and Argentina. And to put that into perspective for you, um, 43 million people in Brazil alone watched the opening match of that World Cup rather than compared to the 26.5 million people that watched the World Cup final in the United States. So 43 million people watched the meaningless match in Brazil and 26.5 million in the United States watched the final. So that just goes to show you 17 million more people watched the meaningless match compared to the United States who watched uh, the biggest match. But with a lot less viewers. Um, so talking about the MLS and the Premier League here, the Premier League is the premier, uh, no play on words there, the premier league in the world. Uh, it has the highest paid players, the most skilled players, the most talented teams. And the MLS down there is the United States team, or the, not the United States team, the United States League, uh, Major League Soccer. And just to compare a little bit of numbers here, um, the Premier League annually from their broadcasting rights makes about $4 billion and the MLS makes about 90 million uh, with between the various uh, networks. And yes, that was 4 billion to 90 million. Um, so it's a very, very drastic um, difference between the two. And, but how, in, how advertising can help this is if the MLS is more promoted, um, the league will start to generate a little bit more um, revenue, they'll start to be able to kind of pay uh, the, the top top tier players and try to pull them away from the Premier League. And if they're able to do so, then over time, there'll be more viewership. Uh, people will start to become more fans of them. And therefore, uh, people will watch it more, they'll buy more jerseys, and the league overall will just keep growing and growing until hopefully 
in probably a hundred years will will get uh, to the level of the Premier League. Um, so just some more numbers to put in retrospect. Uh, these are the two most valued teams in each league. On the left here, you see Liverpool. Uh, they're valued at $1.19 billion. And then the most valued team in the MLS is less than half of that at $500 million. Um, so if advertising is increased, hopefully these numbers uh, for Atlanta United can slowly, gradually start to increase and try to reach the level of Liverpool one day. Um, obviously, it's going to take a lot of time. It's not just going to happen overnight. But so now moving on, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about the culture uh, that soccer can really uh, bring and kind of take over a country or hopefully the United States one day. Um, so as you see here, it's a lot of African children just playing. And the, the thing about soccer that is so beautiful is the simplicity of the sport. So all you need is something round to kick and someone to kick it. Um, as you see here, these kids are playing barefoot. Uh, they don't really care about anything around them besides just getting that ball. Everyone's locked in on it. Um, and sometimes you'll see pictures of kids playing uh, soccer with a ball of trash or not even an actual soccer ball, um, which is kind of amazing how uh, soccer can really take over a culture like that and bring kids together and make them forget about all the bad stuff that's around them. So now I want to talk to you a little bit about Joel Embiid. And Joel Embiid is the current center for the Philadelphia 76ers. Uh, he plays in the NBA. And he's been in the league for about four or five years now. And he's a boy from Cameroon who didn't actually start playing basketball until he was 16. And uh, it's actually a crazy story because soccer was his first love. And his little brother um, actually passed away in a, in a tragic accident. He was struck by a truck uh, when he was 16 years old. And that was, that was Embiid's rock. Uh, they did everything together. And when he remembers him, he thinks back to times where he was supposed to be going to a basketball camp, but since his parents were out of town, they were, they were able to stay home and actually play FIFA, which is a video game uh, based on soccer. And uh, he remembers that vividly, and he says he can remember, almost remember that day more than he can remember any of his greatest basketball moments. So this just goes to show you that soccer is a very vital part in a lot of these young kids' childhoods and beyond that, as Joel still says, soccer is his favorite sport over basketball and he makes frequent visits back to Cameroon to his hometown to work with kids uh, and play the sport that he loves and, and teach them. Um, so wrapping things up here uh, as you see this this graphic here it shows Alex Morgan uh, on the women's national team playing soccer and Christian Pulisic um, watching. So in 2018 the United States men's team uh, did not make the World Cup uh, women's team obviously won it in 2019, and uh, I hope you guys see that uh, by increasing advertising, um, the United States can hopefully cultivate uh, a higher culture and a higher passion for the sport of soccer, uh, like many other European, African, South American countries, who it's really been in their life and part of their lifestyle for a long, long time. And I hope that if you guys don't like soccer, that uh, I was able to change your mind a little bit as I changed my mind when I started getting into it. And now I'm able to see um, how big the sport is globally and how the United States really has a potential to, to grow that culture and to grow those revenues um, if they were able to increase their advertising a little bit. So that's all I have for you guys today. I wanna thank you guys for listening. You guys could give a little, a little wave to say, show you're still in it. All right, all right. Thanks. I'm going to stop my sharing here. Bye.